Mr. Chairman, Dr. Huff, uh, before getting into some of these specific media issues of, uh, of nuclear issues, I want to talk about security clearances. You know, on July 20th of this year, I sent the department a letter specifically to the secretary requesting a review of the security clearance procedures. Um, not yet gotten an answer from the department. Uh, this week, and in the national press reported today, we discover that one of the top deputies in your office who has a, sec a security clearance uh, has been charged with felony theft. Uh, can, can you assure the committee that the department will now undertake a comprehensive review of its security clearance procedures as I've requested? Thank you, Senator. Um, it is certainly correct that when a DOE clearance holder is charged with a crime, the case is considered by DOE personnel security officers, and the matter would be handled pursuant to DOE Order 472-2A. This addresses personnel security matters. And depending on the circumstances, that could result in immediate suspension or revoc revocation of the clearance. I assure you that the integrity of our nation's classified information protections particularly classified nuclear information, uh, is pivotal to our nation's security. I, along with the rest of the Department of Energy, take this security very seriously. So, so is that a yes, that you will now undertake a comprehensive review, that the, the department will take a comprehensive review of its clearance procedures, as I've requested? Senator, we will um, take this back to the DOE, and I will discuss it. Uh, well, it's, it's pretty disturbing when you see what the, what the allegations are and the fact that this person is a security clearance. Oh, move, move on to the next. Uh, last month, the Department of Energy awarded uh, Centris a $150 million contract to produce the fuel that advanced nuclear reactors use. Uh, glad the department is taking steps to encourage the, produce, the production of this fuel right here in the United States. Uh, Centris continues to buy and sell Russian uranium. The department shouldn't use American tax dollars to prop up a company that finances Russia's war in Ukraine. So what steps are you taking to ensure Centris doesn't use Russian material to produce this high assay, low enriched uranium that is needed for this project and additional product, projects in the future for our nuclear future in America? Thank you, Senator. I really value your leadership in the concern about the provision of HALU. Um, at this time, none of our demonstration projects plan on importing high assay, low enriched uranium from Russia for their first cores. Uh, however, there's very little high assay, uh, sorry, highly enriched uranium available here in the U.S. that we can use to make the needed quali quantity. So this demonstration award to Centris will allow us to make material very soon in the 2023 time frame. And that is an important first step, uh, but we need your support in incentivizing a sustainable market-based HALU production capability in the United States capable of providing those two first scores. Thank you. Mr. McIntyre, um, no, I'm sorry, let's please go to Ms. Clover first. Conserving water has been a priority for Wyoming and other upper basin states for years. This isn't something new. In fact, over the past two decades, municipal water use across the four upper basin states has declined per capita despite population growth. To help address the declining water levels of the Colorado River Basin, the upper basin states have come together to prioritize this reauthorization of the System Conservation Pilot Program. Senator Hickenlooper and I, in a bipartisan way, have introduced legislation to do just that. This program is, key, is a key tool to conserve more water in the upper basin to help the Colorado River system. States have successfully worked together to find conservation solutions. In light of this, will the Department of Interior prioritize working through the states and their delegations to address the declining water levels in the Colorado River basin? Thank you for the question, Senator. Um, as, as you know, the Bureau of Reclamation and the Department have submitted a statement for the record in support of the Act, and um, I'm happy to get more information directly from the Bureau of Reclamation, but I can certainly say the Department is committed to working with states and to using all available tools to address this problem. Th thanks, Ms. Clark. Uh, Mr. McIntyre, now, now to you. Earlier this year, the Department sold a portion of our emergency oil reserves to the subsidiary of China's state-owned oil company, Sinopec. Uh, does the department currently have discretion to decline to sell our emergency oil reserves to entities owned by the Chinese government? Thank you, Senator, for that question. Currently, we are obligated by law to sell for the highest value to the taxpayer, to whatever companies provide that. 
The exceptions are any countries that currently have sanctions against them placed on by the, by the U.S. government or Congress. So if you don't have the discretion to decline, do you agree that the two bills before us today would empower the department to decline bids from China state-owned oil companies? Thank you, Senator. The two bills uh, related to the SBR that I spoke to in my oral testimony do prohibit sales to China and would include the U.S. subsidiary Unipec. Um, as, as with everything, uh, we follow the law, so if Congress changes that law, we will, we will follow suit. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator. Senator Heinrich. 